Welcome back, dear viewers of my Mama Sain TV. Um, we are, we just heard a beautiful recitation from Brother Ibrahim um, with the Juma prayers. So I um, hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, so now in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, something a bit different, um, something more practical, and something that's been more in the news and things that in the community we've been trying to remove stigma and a lot of work has been going on. So in these, um, Days we're going to be discussing with a special guest um, about mental health, about things that you know affect us. As I said, loneliness, um, things that people around us ourselves could be affected by, and that could be self harm, suicidal thoughts. So, we d I do hope that in the future, in the weeks ahead, you will be joining us. Um, so, to talk about these issues, um, I'd like to warmly welcome a guest from Canada, um, Sister Barak Hussein who is a psychotherapist and also a Muslim counsellor. So please welcome. Asalaamu Alaikum, Sister Farah. Wa Alaikum as -salam. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah, yourself? Thank you. I'm very well, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us. i um, looking forward to these topics. Um, so we've got yourself and we've got um, Brother Bilal on other mornings as well. So um, in terms of the topics that we'll be discussing in today's is about loneliness. Um, and coming from a community, we're very community-based, aren't we? So perhaps people don't often think about those that could be lonely um, and how it affects sort of the... So we're going to be starting with topics that are sort of, you know, we, perhaps we, we can be quite dismissive and think, oh, what's loneliness? We've got family around us. And there are people in our community that are isolated and, and it could develop into um, sort of more serious things. So really want to delve into, you know, a perspective from, from a, um, an expert about how, you know, how would you describe somebody that's got, who's feeling loneliness? Because we all feel that pang in the day sometimes or in a week or a month or a year. But what's something that you'd categorise as something that's, you know, affecting someone's life? Well, it has to do with our overall mental health. And uh, it's always good to have an understanding of what mental health is versus mental illness. We all have mental health, just like physical health, right? So it's yeah. that balance of everything in our life, whether it's our social aspect, mm -hmm. our spiritual, financial, physical. So when it's all in balance, that means you're, you've got good mental health. Okay. When you don't take care of your mental health properly, so you're not eating well, sleeping well, exercise, or these things are off, it could potentially lead to mental illnesses, which could trigger... Uh, could lead to stress, which then could trigger potentially anxiety, depression, um, loneliness, and a series of other challenges. So not necessarily illnesses, like mm -hmm. loneliness is not defined as an illness, but yeah. it could be um, a result of poor mental health or poor um, social connections. Um, could be people who are, for example, I work a lot with international students, so mm. international students who come yeah. from abroad, students living in other cities coming to uh, where we are, and so it'd be hard uh, to adjust, to connect new social uh, connections, a whole different environment around them. Mm -hmm. And so they could experience loneliness in that way, right? Mm. Everything is new for them. It's hard to make new friends. It could also be you living in your own city. Um, perhaps you don't have strong ties with families or friends. It's hard for you to make connections with people and you could experience that lack of social connection which can lead to that lonely feeling. Um, do you think that loneliness in terms of, so we focus on sort of our community, um, what we can do as a community to sort of you know help people that perhaps should they be coming forward and saying I need help or I, I would like some you know participate in activities or is it something that we we should be looking out as, as individuals thinking oh you know I know that her, X, Y, her family's moved, her husband's passed away, her, his wife. You know. Absolutely. And it's about that awareness, yeah. right? You know, like you just said, somebody who's just had a member of their family pass on or they're new mm -hmm. or, you know, something big has happened in their lives. So it's good to offer that social support. Mm -hmm. And as a community, we and especially leaders in the community and centers, you want to be able to, to have that awareness there so that you can reach out, have committees, welcoming committees, have, mm -hmm. you know, youth committees, ladies committees, uh, young men committees, so that you can draw in people, bring in people. Let's say people come to events, to majalis, and then you always see that per odd person yeah. sitting in the back, not yeah. talking, not connecting. It's really important that you reach out and connect to these people. Converts, reverts, yeah. they experience a lot of loneliness, especially in Ramadan, Eid time, because they can't celebrate or uh, participate 
with family mm -hmm. events during these special times, right? So it's really important as a community that we do yeah. reach out that way and, and connect. Now, somebody who is experiencing loneliness, mm -hmm. let's say they do come in session yeah. to see me, they could display symptoms related to depression, sadness, okay. isolation. Yeah. They could be highly anxious in terms of social anxiety. Hard, you know, it makes them very nervous and it causes them a lot of um, nerve-wracking uh, thoughts to to go and talk to people because they're so worried about judgment. They're so worried about, you know, what are others going to think of them? Mm. And so that will prevent them from going to connect and with people. It, they will display physical symptoms of anxiety. So, mm. you know, heart uh, racing, palpitations, shaking. Um, how, sorry, how soon? So that's, they're quite... When you think about loneliness, you think, okay, you know, because obviously we all sort of experience it, like I said in the beginning, but so these kind of symptoms, they're quite, do they, are they things that have prolonged loneliness have caused, or is that something that, I mean, how soon will you see somebody that is saying, well, I don't, I don't feel good, I, I'm not, I don't feel like getting out of bed, I don't feel like meeting people? It could be either or. Mm -hmm. um, some of the root causes of loneliness could be depression, could be anxiety. I mean, with depression, it could be people exhibiting symptoms of, you know, lack of care of hygiene, loss of interest in activities that they once were mm -hmm. participating in, um, not doing well in school, not attending classes, not going to work, and just withdrawing from people. And so that could be a cause of that, or it could be that loneliness um, causes depression, right? Because when you mm -hmm. are lonely, you are you're away from and isolated, right? Yeah. So that isolation could lead to that. The, the flip side is anxiety as well. You could be lonely because of social anxiety. Mm -hmm. You are afraid of going to connect with people going out. And um, the, the social anxiety is quite debilitating, right? Um, people are afraid of what others are gonna think of them. Yeah. Hence they will stay, they won't go to centers, majalis, school, work. It becomes very debilitating that way. Now in terms of, uh, prolonging um, and how soon. I mean, the sooner people get in uh, to come talk to a therapist because they're experiencing, let's say, sadness or they're ex experiencing anxiety or loneliness, mm -hmm. then we can try and figure out what is the root cause and then figure out some kind of treatment plan to help. Um, so they've had students come in, especially international students. Mm -hmm. It becomes really hard for them to engage in a new environment with a new culture, mm -hmm. a new language and expectations of how to make friends because it's different yeah, in different cultures. Absolutely. So these students, we try to have uh, mentorship programs, um, especially international student services. They would have programs for students mm -hmm. to go and get to know the city where you can go shopping. They'll have different social activities for other international students to connect. Yeah. So, I mean, most universities would have these types of programs yeah. and to help students uh, integrate better and connect and build that social connection. And then we start teaching people how to make friends in yeah. a different culture. Yeah. So this is specific to international yeah. students. But in general, the clients I see who experience mm -hmm. this is because let's say they didn't learn the proper social skills growing up right. involved with emotional intelligence mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. So learning how, you know, referring to how you feel and how you respond to others' emotions and whatnot. So that becomes really hard for them to detect, you know, how do I behave? Some, stu some you know, clients have autistic tendencies. Mm -hmm. um, so that becomes really challenging for them to connect with others because of social challenges there as well. So you basically will meet somebody and then obviously case by case give yes. them that advice and um, so it wouldn't be one size fits all. Um, Absolutely like deep not. Dive, don't you know just no, everybody's, put yourself out there. Everybody's different. Everybody's everybody different. has their own struggles and yeah. so it really depends on first of all where the client is as well. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. got their own pace in, the, in, in terms of where they are in that moment. Some people may not be ready to take on, all right, let's do this plan yeah, where you're, gonna, yeah. you're going to go to a center where there's an event, you're going to go introduce yourself or go to the organizers. That can be really yeah, challenging for somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somebody who's experiencing social anxiety, mm -hmm. which is why they're lonely yeah. per se. Um, so we go step by step. Yeah. I usually start off because I work in a university setting. Yeah. Well, why don't we take a look at the local Muslim group or another group mm -hmm. or society that is of interest to you, perhaps a sports, perhaps um, a video gaming, perhaps fashion, perhaps mm -hmm. travel. And so there you are more likely to meet people who have the same interests, which makes it easier Easy, for you to connect okay. to somebody if there's the same interest yeah. there. 
it's such a vast topic because I was just thinking about um, introverts and extroverts. Yes. And you've got that kind of, and I often read, you know, I'll see things on social media where they say about um, introverts and we really don't like to be, um, you know, it's easier to be an extrovert than an introvert in society because people are, oh, that person keeps to themselves. But that could be their own comfort zone, right? So that's fine, isn't it, to be an introvert? Um, I mean, introverts can still engage yeah. and connect with people. However, how do they draw their energy afterwards mm. is mm. by being alone. Now, there's a difference mm. between being alone mm. and lonely, lonely. Yeah. because uh, an introvert will rejuvenate through being alone, sure. through mm. having that um alone time to stimulate yeah. themselves again, whereas extroverts need the social drama, social activity <laughs> per se, and interaction, that's where they draw their yeah. energy from. Yeah. So there's a huge distinction yeah. between loneliness and being alone. Mm. For example, you could be in a relationship with somebody, mm. okay, in a marriage, and it could be very lonely. Yes because you don't have any intimacy, physical mm. or emotional with this person. There's no connection. You don't do things together. Each person's on their phone or on the, you know, I've, watching I've TV. I've married friends saying that to me, that, you know, you don't understand what it's like to be in a marriage and you're alone. And thank goodness, it's you devastating. don't imagine that because you think you're married. You know, there's someone always there. But, you know, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But no, it's, not it's at all. It's interesting that yeah. it's quite so relevant in our day to day. That, um, and yeah, so what would you say to somebody who is in that situation? Well, I always say go to couples counseling, oh, okay. <laughs> um, not right away. No. I mean, we, if that person comes to see me alone, then we look at strategies how to build the relationship, how to reconnect. I mean, if it was an arranged marriage, chances are yeah. a little bit more challenging. Let's okay. say it was a love marriage or you yeah. knew this person before. Um, but it really depends case by case. But we try to work on building things of interest things that you could do together, especially from a religious, spiritual yeah. aspect in terms of uh, doing things together, du'as, you know, that, prayers. I mean, we haven't, we're literally out of time. I think we've got about 30 seconds left. Okay. But, um, but the interesting thing is that I've always wondered that can you solely connect on tick box of du'as and Qur'an? Because there's a, there's a social element to us, isn't there, that you have to get on as human beings. And that is, you know, what do you find amusing? What do you find interesting? You're, you know, and all those things to match up with a person. Perhaps everything isn't in a spouse then, you know, it's, is it our expectation not. and I don't know, but. They're part of your journey. They may yeah. not necessarily be your journey, right? Yeah. So it all depends how you choose to connect, how you, mm. um, what you can do to work on yourself. It is about self-development as well. Like you're saying, an introvert would be harder for them, mm. but if they want to do it, there are certain steps and therapy can also help with that to find mm. the social skills to, to work and, and get yourself out of loneliness. I see a lot of people who come to therapy mm to talk to someone because they are lonely oh. for long-term yeah. type of counseling. And that can happen. It's so sad because we've even touched about elderly people that are lonely. And yes. that's a massive thing. And again, it's these topics that there's never have enough time to justify sort of, the, and again, your expertise. And I'm sure there's lots of people of different scenarios in their life that may be affecting them. But if people wanted to get in touch with you, um, just for more information, um, where can they reach you? Through social media, um, mm -hmm. you can try the Muslim counselor on Instagram and Facebook. Um, here in uh, London, you have a great resource called the Muslim Youth Helpline. Mm -hmm. They're also accessible on social media and they have counselors you can talk to who understand the Muslim culture and the, the, the variety of cultures that we, subcultures that we do have. And they can also provide resources to connect with if people are struggling with a variety of mental health uh, issues. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, if you know, as a female, you may feel that you want to connect to um, somebody that's you know amiable and um, you know achieve, you know approachable, then obviously Sister Barak Hussein is on social media. Um, it's the Muslim counselor. So do look her up. Um, thank you so much. We'll meet you another morning, inshallah, and inshallah. have a lovely day. You too. Um, and dear viewers, we are now heading to. Let me just check. Um, Dr. Yasser Madani, who's going to be talking about the lungs and its function. <laughs>